Hey, hey everyone. I am Ted. Let's do a great painting. I'm just going to come out here and start setting up. Uh, I've got my 16 by 20 canvas and I am just going to put some liquid white out here. Oh boy. And I'm just going to quickly go over this here. Until the whole canvas is covered. Well, I have a down day today, meaning no uh, specific classes, I guess, so instead of sitting on my laurels here, I figured I'd do a little video for you guys today. It's been a week or so <laughs> since I uh, uploaded anything, so this is the full video, and I think I'll post a, a time lapse of this one as well. This one here, this one here is if, uh, if you're serious about painting and learning this uh, technique, I'm going to walk you through it pretty, pretty thoroughly here. And today we're creating, or recreating, a version of Bob's uh, Joy of Painting episode. Maybe I'll tease you with it and not tell you. Then again, it's probably in the description. So, Season 8, Episode 9. How about that? And I'm going to give this a try. If I've done some strange, uh, stranger than usual things with the clouds. And it's been a while since I made some funky, colorful clouds. Why not do it? Why not do it today? So, thin, even coat. You can see here. Just a little bit there on my fingers, we're good to go. Do I have to do all those like and subscribe and smash the masher button thing? If you want to, you, you'll, you'll do it anyway without me telling you, right? Maybe you won't, and that's why people do it all the time. Golly. I'm starting to figure it out. We've got some colors up here. I think I got them all out here. Uh, we've got the red. Alizarin Crimson, that is. Thalo Blue, Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Sap Green, Ked Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Bright Red, Blue Stars, Yellow Diamonds, Green Shamrocks. Let us figure out a sky here. One of the things that you always see Bob do is have this little runway. It serves a couple of purposes here. Allows us to, to load the brush the way that we want to. And it also locks the paint to the palette, like physically there, so it doesn't slide down. Sometimes the oil paints will want to migrate when you're holding a uh, the easel vertically like this, so that locking them down really helps. Let us put in a simple little sky. I wipe some of that excess liquid white off. Come up here with some some CAD yellow here, just a, a little bit worked into the brush. And Drop it in. The more I go over it, the more it mixes with the white. And the lighter it'll get. So you want to go over it until you get the shade that you like. You can always come back and make it bolder if you want. But without cleaning the brush, I'm going to come over here and grab just a little bit of the yellow ochre on both sides, just in case. And I'm going to put that a little bit overlapping that yellow. If I can get a, a, a cool zoom in in my editing software, I'll show you where, where I, I put that. And I go over it, and I'm just gently softening it. If it needs to be a little bolder, well, I can always tap a little bit more. Just getting the color out there. I'll, I'll do some final blending 
in a little bit. Uh, now what we're looking for is a little bit of bright red, but I am going to scrub out my brush here. I've got a paper towel down on my shelf here, just giving the, the brush a nice little stir. And I'm going to come into the bright red. Just a little bit. Just getting it off. This will turn pink pretty quick, you know, so you get that color off there. I'm really not trying to work it to death here. I'm just letting it hit that yellow ochre bit a little too. And then gently softening right where the colors meet. Not worrying about the upper part right now. In fact, I'm going to use my handy dandy bucket here and I'm going to clean that brush out. And I've got a, a big old bucket here with a pipe running through it. Clean dry brush. And that keeps the paint thinner off the walls. Okay, touch it to a napkin here. I like to make sure it's really dry. And now I can go over this. I'm going to start from the red here. A couple, couple of simple strokes and I'm just bringing it lower. Not trying to go back and forth too much. Just softening, pulling a little bit of that color That's about it. That's about it. And uh, let's see here. I need a fan brush. This will do. And I'm coming in to just straight midnight black. I told you Bob was going to do some interesting things here in this this episode pulling some through here I'm getting plenty on my brush but then I'm I'm wiping a lot of it out I just I'm just looking to see how much paint I'm depositing there so I know how about how much paint is in the brush all right this one's way hello this is the Crazy mixed up clouds we're doing here today. A little more color, get some different shades happening here. Just trying to get some, whoop, that's my phone, some swirlies and whirlies going here. Putting in some dark, having some lighter shades here and there. Don't really, don't really care what's happening down there. Something like that. And then, I'm going to take my two inch brush here and just just soften it up, just barely touching here with the with the bristles. Winding it up, like Bob says, just twist and twirl and whirl, barely touching. We don't really want to move and, and blend all the paint to, to one shade. So keep the brush moving and it leaves all these patterns and swirls everywhere. Okay. I'm going to, I got a, like I said, I got my bucket here. Just going to clean off that fan brush a little bit. Saves me from getting several fan brushes dirty. And I'm going to pull in a little bit of the dark sienna. Same thing I did with the black. Get some up into the brush here. And then wipe it out until you have the, the right amount. There we go. A little bit of the dark sienna. And whoa, here we go. Just going to spin and whirl some dark sienna in here. A 
a little bit here, a little bit over there, bringing it down, this and that. Oh, we don't really care. Try not to think about it. Not even looking. That's how much we don't want to mess with it. And with that two inch brush, again, just, just hints of the brush striking the dark sienna here. Keep that brush moving. Time yourself so you won't go past 10 seconds or so. And then once more for good luck and we call it done. Don't worry about it too much. All right, once again, I'm gonna clean out that brush. This is getting funky. It's so funky, you're pronouncing it funky. Okay, let's put in some, some fluffy clouds now, something that, that stands out. I'm going to get, oh, some titanium white going here. This is a, a really firm paint. And a touch of the alizarin crimson. Pink it up. Pinky eyes it. And now I'll make some little more distinct clouds here. Getting some color up there, tinting it with a bit of the, the crimson, maybe just a touch more. It looks a little, looks a little light. I want to see some, some bold colors in here today, not just fluffy white today. And look how it's mixing a little bit here with the dark sienna, getting in some interesting combinations of colors. Pick up some more here, a little bit more of the, the crimson, more than you think. It, it really shows up quite white on the canvas compared to your palette here. So, you can always add a little bit more. See that? Now it's, now it's looking pink. And when I'm pushing on it, some of these little white bits that are still in the brush come off and it automatically highlights itself. Look at that. Put a little bit more of the dark stuff here. Okay wash out that brush right now because it's just a one nasty looking color. A little bit of the black and pink and brown. If you let them go too much, if you stir it too much, that, that, that resulting dead color isn't quite attractive. So try not to over mix these things. A little bit of that. To clean out my brush one more time. I'm even gonna put my palette down to do it. And I just dropped my brush. But I keep a pretty clean bucket, so no, uh, no dipping my arm into uh, a big pile of thinner there. All right, look at that. I'm just going to give it a little fluff. I don't know if Bob did this or not, but I'm doing it. I like that little upward motion there. Kind of creates a little more fluff. A little more fluffiness. Got hair here and there. A couple of last parting shots. Wow, look at that, huh? What an interesting sky. Just using a couple colors there. Makes all sorts of things happen. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to put some more in there, but <laughs> I'll, I'll hold off. Okay. I do believe Bob actually used 
the big old round brush, even though it's a little, little oval. <laughs> his, his was uh, maybe broken in a little more than this one. I just got a fairly fresh one here not too long ago. And we're going to jump right in and, and make, a, make a set of trees, I think. We got a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown I'll pull out, a little more of the Dark Sienna, and just in case we need it, some black. Not stabbing completely, like the entire brush. Just uh, into the dark sienna and the brown. Just get some kind of mix going. And let's go ahead and... Ooh, boy. Just tap, and all I really care about is this outside edge. <coughs> Excuse me. Making some... Hanging, hanging branches and leaves and things. I think Bob called them hangy downs. All those little things happen when you're striking and moving the brush this way and that. So we're just making some some little outside shapes here. And once in a while, you you reload the brush, and you get different effects depending on how much paint you have. Okay. One of the things you, you don't need to do is just keep tapping everything until it just all mixes with the liquid white. It can get a little dull on you. So, you gotta know when to say when there. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> I didn't, I don't know when to say when. I wanna put a, a, a little taller something here. Maybe not quite quite that big. Bob had a couple of different uh, larger ones. Maybe this tree here grows up a little bit. Has a little little limb off there. Okay. Now what I like to do is drop in. I'm going to take a little bit of the brown. Just sticking, sticking more with the darker brown. You can add a little black if you want a really dark color. And I'm going to try to create another layer here. A little bit more paint in the brush creates a, a slightly closer looking bush, doesn't it? See that? You can kind of see here there's, there's the background way against the sky, and maybe there's something a little closer as well. Here and there, pick out a couple of spots, and you get another plane as Bob likes to call them, planes. Something like that. And, let's see here, I'm going to take my two inch brush and a little bit of that brown and brown. Maybe a little black. Brown, brown, a little black. Tapping some color into that brush. Not a, not a ton there. And let's make a little a little land here. You can have this going just about any angle you want here. And it just helps us create the idea of where things are, are going to flow. out. And, if you're feeling fancy here, you can always bring some bushes down. Change the shape of the land a little bit. See that? I, I put in a little, a little extra bush, chop it off a little bit lower, and it all of a sudden just sort of pops down. It looks a little closer and closer. Okay. I think that's good for now. Scrub out my brush. A little bit on the easel, just like Bob did. <laughs> Got to clean out this uh, 
big brush too. I've got some more of these put away somewhere. I haven't used them for classes in a while, so I don't have multiples just sitting out here. But I got one. I'd suggest if you uh, take up this painting and you do any painting on a regular basis, get a, get a couple of each brush. It does save you time cleaning, especially when you want to keep working and putting dark, dark trees in and then highlighting them as you go. It's just a lot of brush cleaning that way. All right, let's take, in this same concept here, take this yellow ochre, touch of the bright yellow, and I, I just touch and I, I get this little working pile going here for, until I find the, the color I like. And let's create a little highlight here and there. Okay, a little bit here and there, just stippling some basic little tappers. I'm going to come back here and get a little bit of green, tapping that color, a little yellow ochre here and there. Maybe this big old tree has some some green on it. It's far away. We don't need a lot of detail back there. Just some little indications of highlight. And then what I like to do is you come back and, and get a completely different color and put a different little tree in front. the color right down. There we go. Let's see what else we got. We got some yellows. Mix and, mix and match, basically. One of my favorite highlight colors recently is, is a little bit of a bright red and yellow ochre mixed together. Bright red, a little yellow ochre, you tap them, just makes this lovely, lovely shade. Little bright ones, going back into the yellow to lighten things up. front like that there we go and just a couple of last little ones create that plain look I was mentioning there. A couple of extra bushes in front there. Something like that. Not overly concerned about the bottom edge because we're going we're gonna to cut those off wherever we want them to be. Wherever the land makes sense to us, that's what we'll put it in. Creating multiple little bush layers here. Got like one, two, three there. Okay. I'm taking just a, a little bit of a liquid white. Not much at all. We want to thin this down just a little bit. I'm going to come in here and 
just want to get some of this paint up in the brush here. Cad yellow, yellow ochre, touch of green maybe. Have a couple different shades happening here and get some paint on the brush and push our way forward. Just sort of shovel upwards. Okay? Get some, some different shades going here. Even a little bright red even. And let's drop in some grass. Right, right like that. Tap. And the more we tap it, the softer it gets. It happens quick. We can always come back and brighten things up. Working my way. Just dropping in a little, a little interesting colors there in the ground. change up the color, add a touch of highlight, or a little bit of, of darker color, maybe catches a little bit of something right there. Maybe over here, get a little more greenery in there. So I'm just going to touch a green and create a, a slightly duller shade as we're moving away from the brighter sunlight. We'll get something in there like that. Just to, just to give the indication of grass. And you know, I think I'm going to continue it down. I just took a look at my uh, reference photo there and I, I see here he uh, he had a lot more down here, so get some of this dark color to back down here, a little bit of the black and the brown. cadmium yellow. I didn't uh, put enough out there. If you've watched the joy of painting there, sometimes Bob just has, oh my gosh, like six pounds of each color out there. I can't afford to spend that much paint on <laughs> every time I paint. Sometimes I'm forced to do two or three paintings just because I have, uh, I squeezed out too much. And that's not always a bad thing. And there's ways you can save your paint for later. i rather just use what I need. This different stuff happening here. Maybe a little more greenery here and there. All sorts of different things happening. The more you tap it, the, the softer, like Bob would say, more velvety it gets. Now, Bob just created a, a path by, by using this pretty clean and dry brush and just pulled some of this color 
Oh, see that? We're just creating a, a, a thin little path using the color that's already there. But sometimes you might not have quite enough. So I, I think Bob like would grab a little bit of the, the brown here and there and, and just a little bit help give us some, some body to this, this path here. Used a little bit of it, but it's mostly this color that's already down here. touch of a dark sienna, a little touch of white. Here and there, I'm throwing a little bit of the Midnight Black in there as well. Interesting, huh? So I'm doing that too. I'm picking up a little bit of white. Dropping some in here. And it's okay to do a little more than you need. That way we can overlap whatever we, we need to. Nice. I feel this could be like rapids and, and uh, brooks or a stream or something if you didn't want to do a path. That would look kind of kind of interesting. All right, let's see here. I think we got to put something, something in there. I'm going to take a little bit of, I think Bob did this, I'm not sure, some, ooh, that's a, that's an ugly color. I might have I might have wanted to clean my brush first. Let's uh, let's just change that up real quick. And a lot of brown in there. And that's one of the great things about this this kind of painting. You don't like the way that it looks change it, you know? Got a little bit of color out here. If you don't like the way that it looks, just clean your brush, clean your palette, and do it again. A little bit of alizarin crimson, phthalo blue. A little bit to the red side here. Now this whole tree we didn't even really need to do if we didn't want to. Maybe we'll see some of it, but I think some of it's going to get covered up. A little bit of this funky purple here. Just something here in the in the foreground. Wow. And before I get too far here, let's put a couple of sticks and twigs back over here, back here, that was quite a few. Not too bad just to give a little extra detail back there. A 
I'm going to take some straight up midnight black here. Now if you had a little bit of red or, or phthalo blue into it, that would be fine too. Like if you're running out of black and you just needed more color, put in those dark colors. It, it works just fine. Gives you a little bit more uh, body of paint to work with. Deep breath, chopping strokes. I'm, I'm sort of stabbing in and down at the same time. Just to put some kind of some kind of tree shape in there. Okay. Avoid the temptation of uh, going over and over and over it. Oh, there's a big one. This one will be a little closer to us. Show to justify how tall it is. And this one gets a friend. Tall friend. But not as tall. And, oh, I don't even know what to do with the foots right now. Maybe, maybe it'll be something kind of coming off like that. It's got to have some kind of roots in it. Well, we'll, we'll clean that back up with uh, with our ground cover there. And got to make, make this tree somewhat make sense. You know, needs to be a little, little skinnier at the top a little wider at the bottom and you'll be able to figure it out see uh, what how wide that really needs to get you know Okay, and what I'm going to do here is grab a little bit of the white. I didn't even clean my brush here, just, just tapping into a little bit of the white. Don't tap too much. And let's, let's give this one a little bit of a highlight side. That's why I had to double check myself there. I knew Bob highlighted these here. Just tapping. To make one side a little lighter than the other. There we go. I got the white out of my brush there and just going right back into the, the standard black. And we'll, we're going to put some some basic little uh, foliage needles, I guess that would be, here and there. On the one in the way back, then of course we're going to need some for the, the ones in the foreground. I like to, to skip around. These are some old, old dead ones here. They don't have too much on them. Nice. Been a while since I've done those kind of trees in, in the background like that. Well, we have some funky, funky things happening on the left side. Let's get back to that. Oh, well, before I do that, I can put in the, some, some little, little bits over the foot here. Oh, 
I could just keep tapping this forever. <laughs> I'm gonna create some some trunk looking things over uh, on this other tree here I think some some black some brown thinned way down with some paint thinner and let's create a couple little little things going down there got a couple little branches snaking here and there Maybe another tree kind of goes here and there. And with a slightly lighter brown color here, I had some dark sienna, some white. You can put just a little thin stripe here and there going up these branches. Not really thinking about it too much, just, just something out there. Throw some highlight here and there. And let's change things up here. I'm going to take just uh, a touch of that CAD yellow into that big old two inch brush. Let's, let's get some, some greenery in it and a touch of that yellow ochre. Now, push up there, get that nice ridge of paint. You see that? That little ridge of paint's living right out there on the edge of the, of the, the bristles there. And I'm going to come up here and Drop in some color here and there, deep, 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 deep. making these little clumps that give a little indication of some, some branches out there. Little clumps, not, not just hitting everywhere at once, every, every, every little, little thing, but definitely little, little areas where there's some. Working my way down. Deep, deep, deep. Do, 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 do. Something like that. Do, 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 do. And I think down here, let's do what Bob did. And we'll add another tree trunk here. Let's give an indication there's something in front of this stuff here. And let's make this one. Light. A couple of gnarly looking things here. right down there. This is just the black and the brown. There we go. And once again, a little more color. Let's see if I can get the last little bit out of this yellow ochre here. I think that might do it. Let's go ahead and a touch of the liquid white, the yellow ochre. I can always add a little bright red because I love it. Touch of the yellow, lighten it up. And a 
adding in. Oh, I guess that is the tree out there now. Look at that. I wasn't sure what I was putting in. It was a tree or it was a bush. Yeah, it's a tree. Now it's got some bushes underneath it. This little yellow one coming out here. It's got a couple of different shades in it. Come over here. Add some greenery. And we just work our way down, working in layers. Leaving a little bit of dark, or even some of this misty white. There we go. Well, Bob can't can't leave you like that. He uh, he put in a, a, a big old tree. Can't forget the big old tree. Now he uh, he of course. Uh, had a cutout on this one, so I can't make the, the composition exactly the same, but we can certainly put a, a big old tree in here. Mm, say right about here. There's our bravery test. this nice old shaggy bark pine here. Just get it somewhat the way you like it. Then we can come over with just a little bit of the titanium white, of which I've got no clean titanium white, so I'll just get a, a little chunk there. into that titanium white with the black still in my fan brush it doesn't it doesn't need to be stark white just 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 lighter here we go put it right there as close to the edge as you can working my way down just getting it out onto the tree here See that? You put like a little stripe and now as you tap right where the white and, and black mix, you'll, you'll get the transition. All you got to do is just tap that, that left edge of the stripe and that leaves a nice bright spot on the edge and it gets darker as you work your way from the tree. I know you're tempted just to keep going over and over and put a little more color there and it, it, it deadens out pretty quick, you know. Take a step back, see if you need to add a little bit, gentle with the tapping, let some of that dark remain, and in no time you'll, you'll get the, the right highlights there. Now this tree's nice and big, we can put in, we can put in some, some decent sized branches here with our uh, Mineral Spirits and, and Midnight Black. This 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 guy here, he's got a he's got a big old limb right there. Working one little limb at a time here. This one here kind of comes out from from the middle of the tree. Drop that in and let it be. As I'm working my way up, a couple of smaller ones here. Doesn't really matter. You know, if they're not exactly the way you like them, 
don't worry about it. We're going to cover up whatever ones you don't like. We'll just do that very simply with the highlights. Okay, so you make a couple of funky looking ones. No worries. No problems at all. I like making these little little things kind of coming out here and there. This one here, maybe you'll see a couple little broken stems and, and branches and things coming off. A couple little things here and there if you like. with a little bit of the straight midnight black. There's a little brown in there if needed. We're gonna make these limbs out here wherever you think they're, they're needed, covering up some of, of the branch here and there. No big deal. You, you decide how much of this uh, tree has how much foliage. I like to see a couple of these branches here, so put on what you need to, but leave some of them. I tell you, you're going to love it. Let some of these branches get covered, sure. Cover up the others. You just mash that dark color in there. Ooh, that one just kind of disappeared now, didn't it? There it is. Just gives a little indication of, of certain things here and there. And a little bit of the yellow and green. Get a, get a nice little highlight color going. little bit of highlight. Let some of that dark remain. Ooh, I think that'll do it. And let's see, with just a little bit of paint I have left, I'm going to cover that tree foot up. There it is. And I think we've got ourselves a completed painting. Hopefully that made sense to you here. I don't think, I don't like to edit too much. It takes a lot of time, you know. But if you do see a couple of transitions happening, it was just me cutting out, cleaning a brush, or something that didn't really affect the painting. I, I'm showing a, a complete time lapse here. There's only going to be a couple of minutes, but this is definitely under an hour uh, for the full version. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.